Hello there, Mr. Zonker here. I hope your brain is fully functioning at this point in time because this video is about functions. And functions show relationships between variables. That is the inputs and the outputs. Hopefully that looks a little familiar to you. Let's get to it. So up until this point, we've been using standard notation for equations. That is kind of the traditional y equals 2x plus 4 with a y and x. As we get older in math, we start looking at things in the sense of a function, which we say f of x equals 2x plus 4. So this would be function f, and we say f of x equals 2x plus 4. This f of x is really just a replacement for y, the same basic idea of the equations. Let's look at an example using these functions. Use the function f of x equals 2x plus 4 to find first f of 3. So what this f of 3 means is that basically we're going to take an input of 3, that is to substitute in x equals 3 right into our function. So if we did that, we'd have f of 3 equals 2, and then instead of x, that's our input of 3, and then we have plus 4, which 2 times 3 is 6, plus 4 would be 10. So f of 3 would equal 10. We can also find x if we know what f of x is, like if we wanted to find x where f of x equals negative 12. So in this case, we know the output is negative 12, or that f of x is negative 12, and we're going to sub in negative 12 for that value. So instead of f of x, we can set up an equation here, negative 12, that's replacing this f of x, negative 12, equals 2x plus 4. So everything's the same, just switching out f of x for negative 12. And if we solve this, subtract 4 both sides, divide by 2, it looks like we're going to get an x value of negative 8. Just like equations, we can represent functions in a variety of different ways. And here's some of the most popular ways. An equation, like the one we talked about, f of x equals 2x plus 4. A graph, just a graph of a line or a curve or any graph is also representative of a function. And a table that gives us some x, y values that would work with that function. Ah, spider! Sorry about that. I've had a lot of spiders this year. I don't know why. I wonder how to get rid of them all. Eh, I'll search the web later. For now. Functions are consistent. That means that each input x has exactly one output y for it to be considered a function. So, for example, if we take a table, each x has one y. 1, 3, 2, 5, 8, 6, that's a function. y equals 1 half x minus 2, an equation. Uh, this one is just a regular line. That's only going to have one x will give us one y. And in the case of a graph, if we put points on this graph, x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y, each x would only have one y. Let's look at some non-examples. Maybe that'll help us get a better understanding of, of what a function does not look like. Here we have a table, 1, 4, 2, 7. Ah, check this out. 8, 8, and 8, 10. So this x value of 8 has different y values, not a function. This y squared equals x equation if we had x equals 4, y might be negative 2 or positive 2, because 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 squared is 4. So the x value 4 has two different y values, also not a function. On a graph, like this curve we have right here, if I took two different points on here, we would see that this x value has two different y values. So we'd say that is not a function either. Let's look at some different ways that we can describe functions. First, we could say increasing, decreasing or constant from left to right. Is it going up, going down, or staying the same? We can talk about x and y intercepts. That's where the graph intersects with the x-axis or the y-axis. This word domain refers to all possible x values of the function, and a range refers to all possible y values of a function. Here we have 
a function that is graphed. We can see from left to right it's increasing, then decreasing, then increasing again. We can see our x-intercept is right here at negative 2, 0. Our y-intercept is right here at 0, 2. Looks like a little above 2. That's okay. Now our domain, we write just like this. Negative 3x, looking at our x values, x is bigger than negative 3, and it goes all the way to 1, 2, 3, 4. So x values go from negative 3 to 4. We say x is in between negative 3 and 4. Our range, we're looking at our y-axis. It looks like our smallest y value is negative 1, and it goes all the way up to about 3. So we would say y is in between negative 1 and 3. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful.